Welcome to Overwatch. Welcome to another episode of Probing the Many. Today, we're going to talk about Anna and Zarya, apparently. Anna and Zarya 2, Coaching the Many, or Anna and Zarya dash dash Coaching the Many. Uh, let's take a look. This is going to be a pseudo guess my SR. I want you guys to try and guess the SR. I accidentally read it in the email, so I know what it is. I, I got scroll happy and read it. I'm sorry. Uh, so I know what it is. We're not probing the many? No, we're not probing the many. We're coaching the many. Did I say probing? I didn't mean to say probing. Um, it shouldn't have said so you can get bang on. No, I don't want to cheat. If I cheat, then that's just not fair. Interesting hero mix. Uh, let's see. I want to improve on opponent stuff. Uh... Yeah. Okay. So we're actually starting out on an interesting one. I think he mentions why he plays Hog and Zarya somewhere in here. I'm just reading very quickly. Okay, first things first, I actually like this. Like, this plays again into... I'm going to say this like every single time people walk out of spawn, but if you aren't a tank, there is no reason to like face plant your way out of spawn. It's just a good way to die very early or give a lot of ult charge. Let the tanks do it, and then follow after a moment or two later, which is what we end up doing. Okay, so that looks fine. This this guy has a death wish. Uh, well, the the soldier has a death wish slightly. Woo! Okay, so it feels like we don't know kind of. Um, it feels like, and this is like the team as a whole as well. This isn't just on us, but on King's Row, how the the map should evolve, how the map should kind of flow uh, from moment to moment to moment. And so the the big issue here is that the team is kind of doing the the old. I am stuck in choke. Uh, I am like stuck in the choke point, and I'm not doing anything syndrome. Where this this is a really good like busty team. That that did not that's not what I meant. It's I mean th there is Roadhog, who is particularly busty, but beyond that, I don't. This is not the bustiest of teams. Um, yeah, this this is a shield breaky team, right? This is a team that will break shields extremely well. So you want to sort of get into their face, and the best way to do that is to first of all you need to cross, and then generally what teams will do is they'll play from behind the fountain because that gives you two um, angles of attack. You can attack on either side of the fountain, and then from the fountain you can push further in uh, behind me. Hello, I'm here. Uh, so yeah, what we're kind of doing at the moment is it's like the Arisa's putting the barrier, and then some people are crossing, but not everyone. And as Anna, I like to get across there nice and early. So when the next barrier goes down, I want to see us cross. Because otherwise you end up stuck here. And we're like, we're kind of doing it, but we're going across and then backing off and going across and then backing off and going across. Just commit to crossing. Trust me, you'll be happier over there. You can do more. Because now we're stuck. Like, what do we do? What do we do? Help this. Help these people. Help these men. Nice. Good job. Help these busty, busty men. It is actually a thing. I shouldn't say that. Busty boys is a, is a thing that certain people enjoy. Not me. It's men with big old biceps, basically. That's what it means. Ooh. Nah. I looked at soldiers ult. Nice. Honestly, good. That's that's correct. I like this way of giving me notes. <laughs> that's a cute way of doing it. Um, yeah, it's... That's actually a really nice thing to be doing at this. I think like it's a great ult. Um, the only issue I have with it is like, yeah, no, that's fine. Like press tab quickly when, especially when in the hotel. I don't like this rotation. Like back out here again. This is unsafe. Just stay in the hotel. Like your team's pushing through the hotel. It's fine. You're good here. Check soldiers ult while you're in the hotel and moving through it. And then you know what the score is. You know that he's on seventy percent, but he's in a good position. And this is honestly fine. Like, we should be focusing on healing, and then Soldier's just in a great placement at the moment. So, yeah. Ulting him is fine. Don't like us doing barrier damage here. Don't like that at all. Don't like that at all, what we did there. We were in such a good place, and then we just messed it up. You let everybody else deal with this shit. That's other people's problems. You got, like, a Torbjorn running in on your team. People take, like, potentially getting right-click deleted... Anna, Anna doesn't do much damage. 
Anna, Anna doesn't hurt people that much. It's 70 per shot, and it's like one shot a second, if that. It's not great. It's not It's not the greatest. We, If the enemy team sees the Anna just like running and bounding towards them, they will all turn and just shoot at the Anna. Um, so, yeah, like what we need to do here is Soldier's going to put on a ton of pressure, probably break this Rhine barrier, maybe kill some stuff, get Tac Visor. He's going to be grand. We just want to be in position where everybody is alive and their barriers are down and they're stuck on the point in this awkward place. So if we just move through, we can either just ult this guy and then back into here, or we can just move through and stay on this side and stay behind this wall. Heal up the, the Hog and Moira, be good to go for the rest of the fight. If this is going for a grenade, this will never work. Like, this is just suicide because we're just running at four people just think about what they're seeing here like they have the soldier behind them which is awkward difficult to kill difficult to deal with they got a moira who still has fade i think gonna be difficult to kill difficult to deal with a hog who's still on like full hurt points and then anna just going ah charge and they're gonna shoot you ideally they will just shoot you we should still be okay. We should still win this. Like, Coalescence should win it. Visor, yep. Yep, I completely agree with what's going into the note. Uh, going into the notes here. The soldier did a great job. Like, the soldier did an absolutely great job in positioning himself there. He got away. Like, the enemy team can't really do much about him. Genji can try and contest him, but. One of the strengths of Soldier is he's very good on flanking. Like, he can run around a little bit, get on high ground, heal himself up just fine. You want a tip for clearing all that? Control A, backspace. Or clear it all. We're getting a little bit horny here. Only thing, again, when you move out into an open space, and this is true for anyone playing support and anyone playing DPS as well, or anyone just playing anything. Choke point. People can move through choke point, right? We've got this. We've got this lovely archway. Optimal spaces are here, and here. Bad places. Here, here, here. Like anything in the middle of it. Once you are in the middle of it, people can just shoot you. And if you want to escape, it's going to take more time. If you just poke around the corner, you can maybe do some stuff. I'd also say in general, like, nading um, barriers, not really worth doing. Just in, out of my own experience. So, like, this this motion here, where you're, like, peeking out, it's risky. And, I, like, I'm still not a big fan of it, especially if there's no tank in front of you. There's no reason why, not, why you can't just wait. But if you are going to do this, just fire a shot off or two, and then go from there. By moving all the way out, that's giving opportunities for people to land hits on you, try and kill you, Orisa can halt you. So Missile Mage mentioned, um, like, why, you know, why the two tanks? Also, the moment you see the turret, shoot the turret, Zana. Um, you can kill it pretty quickly. Wouldn't it be nice to have that nade? Jesus, that Genji. Um, this is where that nade is going to be useful, right? This is why you've got to really think about these sorts of things where, okay, we're throwing a nade into a barrier, but they have an Arita as well who's just going to replace it. I know they have this weird double main tank stuff, but... When you see a Genji do something like this, just nading the floor, A, anti-heal on him, that's great, uh, means he won't get the support he needs, B, uh, yeah, you can just, like, the, the Moira can heal through quite a lot, all your healing is amplified and more effective. Looks like the Nano comes out slow for their team, which is good. And yeah, your team just somehow survives it. That's great for you guys, because you guys don't deal well with Nano Blade. I'd say that was a little bit of a selfish nade. So my issue with the nade... Also, this is a good example, by the way. Notice notice that we just took 140 damage. Like, I didn't even fully like register that we took 140 damage. Like, just moving through this, just moving through this little choke point, we just took a, a complete pound in off the Torbjorn. There it is. You can see you can see the hot goo coming towards us now. I found the frame. There it is. Anything else? Arisa spam, um, Genji shurikens, Ana shots. Anything else? We die here. Anything else? 
Even if you landed a fat purple, who would that have killed? We, we want to build ult charge. Like, purpling the whole enemy team, that gives you a ton of ult charge. So, that's part of why you just throw nades at the enemy at times. The reason why I'm not super happy with it is we are safe here. We are, like, I still feel really safe. The Genji's dead. Their team isn't exactly the most vertical team. I'm I'm what feeling pretty safe. You know who isn't safe? This guy. This guy isn't safe. This guy doesn't feel safe. Hey, Clive, thank you so much, man. Very much appreciated. Uh, so yeah, this guy doesn't feel safe. So I'd have just naded over here and just made sure the Roadhog survived. It's fine. It is fine to do this, but then if I was you, I'd just nade myself and then scope in, still in this position, because this is the ideal. I've talked about this so many times before, but I'll talk about it again, because it's always important and relevant. Take stock of this situation. We have the choke point here. Our team is... Let's, let me get green. Our team is all in this area. It's all in this space. Enemy team. Let me get red. Let me get the colors. All in this space. And we are back here. We are completely safe from the enemy team. There's no way. So we, as long as we have perfect sightline on all our team, we can just scope in and heal, 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 heal. Almost two years. Oh yeah, it is almost two years. Thank you so much, man. Like it really, it really does make a difference. It's very much appreciated. Reaper goes huge. Good stuff. Mind the goo. I learned much to my chagrin that you can't just like run through it and hope to live. Okay, so far so good. Welcome to Overwatch, Monsilly. Hey, Silverdale as well. Thank Thanks you so much, Silverdale. Seven months. Very much appreciated, my man. Hopefully all is good. Silverdale is an excellent support player, if I remember correctly. Hopefully I do. Uh, right. This is a good push from your team. I think the uh, my only issue is, like, we're, we're getting a bit horny. Where we're, like, really trying... Like, what we're trying to do here... Is it's like we're trying to get sight on the enemy and not sight on our allies. So, it, like, the way I generally think of it is like a pivot. So if you, like, put a pivot here, if you, like, put a pole here, and you have the enemy team, which is, like, here and us here, and you draw a line through it, you generally want to kind of keep on this angle, right? You want to keep on that axis, where the enemy team is behind the wall, and you can just keep angling around it and keep your team in vision. I, I generally use horny as, a, like, a generalist term. And I just worry when I see people like, you know, when I say horny for it, it's like, okay, well, I need to heal this Roadhog, reload, okay, we're going, we're going, we're going, I'm just going to jump forward, I'm like really eagerly going forward, I'm putting people on my team behind me, so I can't see, because I'm going forward, and we sort of curb it in, which is nice here at this point, and then it seems okay here, like this is fine and ideal, stay by the payload, get to healing, not sure what we're doing here, I'm taking a breather, having a slurp of drink, Moira still needs our help, by the way. That's why paying attention is always vital. Critical. Always, always on the critical. Notes? Okay. There'll be notes about this, apparently. Yeah, poor, poor Moira. Sometimes I randomly walk into walls as I press tab. Oh, okay, you're pressing tab. Just in general, like, when you are doing stuff like that, you want to press tab very quickly. Like, if you're thinking about, oh, who do I nano? You press tab, you check soldier, you check roadhog here, probably. You see, oh, shit, I don't have anything good to nano. And then, honestly, I would just take a moment and just try and take stock. Like, it costs you nothing to turn around for a second. Like, you do want to focus on this roadhog because he's very likely to take damage, but it doesn't cost you much to turn around and check. Just make sure everybody's topped off and okay. It is sort of one of the downsides of watching the, the VOD, is that we don't get to see when people press tab. They don't want to contest, that's great for us. You could also just, like, in my thoughts for the next Nano, it's probably just Nano Reaper, or Nano Roadhog. You probably won't need it. Nade? A little bit off on the nade. So when you are nading after a charge like this, Nade the floor. Nade the floor. Reaper Soldier, which is better to ult, it's circumstantial. If your team can get into their team and there's no reason why your team can't, Reaper would actually be a really good choice here. Nanoing Orisa. Nanoing Orisa is really good if the Reinhardt does stuff like this and engages super hard on the Orisa. Then you just nano her and it's just, it's literally like the scene in Eichenwald where like Ryan charges the Orisa and the Orisa's just like, nope, 
<laughs> it's literally that moment all over again. They'll just find him in spawns, just going, it's again, oh, I can vault again, it's I can vault again, it's I can vault again, it's I can vault again. That mud has just got a bit dark. Um, yeah. Just nade the floor. Because the Reinhardt will always push you with him. And by nading the floor, you, you'll get him, you'll get the Orisa, and you'll get everything. And then you can just top the Orisa off afterwards, and it's all fine. Yeah, I wish Orisa was like melee, like she's just like deployed a sword and just... Like, then I guess like, oh, Effie took away the sword. It's like Tracer's pulse pistols are technically like... Apparently they're meant to be like stun weapons, which is why she can just like shoot them at people and they don't just get riddled by SMGs. Um, yep. It happens. I've done it myself. I've slept darty with my own team a few times. It's okay. Don't worry about it too much. Just keep that nano boost in mind if your team needs it. Your soldier is suicidal. If you're playing soldier, literally this guy is trying to throw the game. Um, there is no point for him to be up there. There is nothing good that can come of that. If he gets like a couple of headshots, if Mei lands a shot on him and then like Genji's shurikens come through, if something hits him, he's dead. Your team loses so much firepower and so much pressure. It's, like just stay put. Don't be in front of the barriers. Don't leave yourself vulnerable to getting headshot and just dying. That was actually an okay grenade. I'm actually fine with that one. As weird as it sounds. The reason why I'm okay with it is because the Rhine's barrier was down. So yeah, there was a chance you could get it. And yeah, I understand that. It almost worked. Uh, I, I do this from time to time myself. you got four minutes as well, so I wouldn't feel too bad about doing this. Which is like... I am going to die, so I will ult. And the Reapers in the back line, maybe you can kill everyone. Maybe people survive. Um, like, th there's a chance the Roadhog survives this. There's a chance the Moira survives this. There's a chance the Orisa can survive this. It's really only you and Soldier that can that will very, 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 very likely die to this. You can just let this go. But honestly, using that Nano probably is what forced this Sound Barrier. And that's fine. I will trade Nano for Sound Barrier every time. Think you're too far up? It's a, uh, a little bit. I'm not too fussed about it here. Like we're still safe. We can still see everything that's happening. We're a little bit far forward, but like we're still playing behind the Orisa. Maybe one or two steps back, but not. We don't really need to be any further back. The enemy team's still a good decent uh, distance away. The Genji will get to us regardless of where we are. Like in this situation, even if we're all the way back, like here, he will still be able to just dash. Draw, dash, get to us, kill us. Like maybe here is, is probably a little bit better, but if the opportunity presents itself, we're in a good grenade location. We're still safe from most threats. I didn't want to die with Nano. Yeah, I I know that feeling. And honestly, it looks like it might have worked. Your team is almost won. Yeah, don't don't stop there. The, the way to do this is when you're going this way, and especially as you see the silhouette come up, you jump and scope in, try and get a quick shot, but after one shot, don't stay here. You don't have the sight line. Just get around this corner. If you can get there and just pump healing into Reaper, pump pump healing into people. He healing on the, the DPS. They do more damage than you. That's why the DPS. We get a little... Again, this is, this is where the word horny comes back, because it's like, oh, I can win! I can win the game, I've got to shoot the enemies. If you just tunnel healing into Reaper, I don't think they can kill him. Um, as long as he's shooting things, he will just never die. So just keep an eye on anything wounded. Top it off. Keep it alive. It's good practice. Easier to hit your allies than your enemies as well. And a tip. Just a shame you didn't fire it. Yeah, you could have gone for a sleep dart, but it's it's so unlikely. Like, the way I generally try and do those sorts of sleep darts is when the enemy goes for you like that. Like, you just... I'll generally turn the direction that they're charging, so I'll just turn a little bit and just fire it, because you know that they're coming for you. You know that they want to kill Ana. So I have to constantly move into different positions, making me think this is on the gold plat border. You don't know, chat. Got some good info so far on like how people are playing. 
This is a team comp. What the hell's happening here? Okay. Let's talk about team comps. Uh, yeah, just as this one's starting. The gates have opened. We have a very unusual team. So yeah, Zarya now. We're no longer on Anna, we're on Zarya. Uh, I will probably end up talking about the three stages of Zarya sooner rather than later, so we might get that out of the way right now. This is the most important mindset thing for Zarya. Okay? I've talked about this many, many times, and I'll talk about it many times in the future. Brace yourselves, if you already know this. Number one, building. I should probably use the tablet for this. Uh, number one, building. Is this going to be upside down? If I'm here, yes, it is. It's going to be upside down. That's not going to work. All right, we're going to be building. What what do we do when we're building? Well, we are main we're trying to get to high charge. You're trying to get to about 80% charge. When you're at about 80% charge, two, we are going to be doing main... Okay. Taining. I know you can't read that. Maintaining. I don't care that you can't read it. When you're maintaining, what you're trying to do is keep it around 60 to 80% charge, right? We'll talk about these stages in more detail. These are general outlines. And then three, alt, right? You are going to be alting, and that's what you're going to be focusing your play around more than anything else. One and two still kind of apply, but three is important. What do I mean by building? When you are in stage number one, you are using your barriers aggressively. You're trying to find people who are taking damage. You're not using them defensively. You're trying to just get them out there to build your charge as quickly as possible. Do things like use your self barrier, walk in front of a bubble, take damage, back off bubble people like Reinhardt and stuff to block damage here and there. You are trying to get charge as fast as possible because this area with zero charge and this area with 80 to 100 charge is worlds apart in value, right? The, the high charge area is always better. Two. Maintaining. This is when we want to be more conservative with our barriers. In general, I will use my personal barrier more aggressively than I will my projected barrier because the projected barrier can, of course, just save more people. And so with a personal barrier, I'll generally like step in front of, you know, my tank's barrier, bubble, take some damage, back off, and then have my person, uh, my projected barrier available to save anyone that needs it. This is good for like dealing with roadhogs. It's good for dealing with Genjis, Doomfests, all this sort of stuff. So when you are in that mode, when you've got that charge, 60 to about 80, that's when we're like, thinking, okay, now I want to be playing more of an off tank. Now if my Reinhardt's getting rushed down, I have the barrier and I don't need to throw it out constantly to just try and get charge. Number three is alt. Uh, yeah, one and two still apply. That's that's still a thing. You're still trying to maintain that high charge, but you're then positioning around alting. Like you will gladly take a position where you know you can get a good grab guaranteed, rather than trying to fish for alt charge. You know, so if, let's take this position for example. You could just stand and wait right here if they've been pushing around this corner nonstop. You'll just stand and wait here, not really caring about your alt charge or your barrier charge too much, just to get the good grab off. Right, that's what you're looking for. Let's see if that applies. No one was in voice. Is this Europe? I think it is in Europe. I think I saw you mention that... Your name looks European at the very least. Uh, like, this is sort of the awkward part when you have Winston Zarya. It's difficult, especially on defense. It's very, very difficult to get like that first barrier working and functional. You have to be very... Especially when you're not communicating, and my general assumption will be this. Okay, no matter what is happening, the Winston will always bubble immediately. No matter what is happening. Okay, uh, this is true until at least High Masters. The Winston will always rely on his self-bubble straight away. He will always be landing and drop his barrier and have his big old dome of safety. So if you then bubble him as he's jumping or as he's landing, he will still bubble and you will get zero. Always expect him to do that. 100%. I like it. Okay, take it chill for a couple of seconds. So, here's like the momentum of Zarya, the ebb and flow of Zarya as well. Okay, we've got projected barrier. We're lacking personal barrier. So that's when we should start thinking about line of sight and like using walls. We only have 400 hit points. It's not as much as you would think. 
especially if they do have like an Ash and a Genji. If Ash lands some headshots, for example, you can lose a lot of hit points very quickly. You can be hooked and killed. There's there's ways of dying here that you know should be leaving you feeling a little bit uncomfortable in being in these central areas. You can play from here. You can play from here. Still be relatively safe. Still do kind of the same thing. Still shoot the barrier if you like over here. You can shoot the barrier, bubble the torb, all that good stuff as we try and get higher charge. But you can do it safely. Once you're the Winston bubble, he like you should generally like ideally you work it out with the Zarya. Okay, we've used our bubble quite badly there. Oh no, it's been okay. It's still not great, but it's okay. Um, the Winston should either, like you should know with the Zarya. It's either, and this is why I say expect the Winston to always bubble. Um, the Winston should bubble after the Zarya bubble because then he lands, he can do damage, damage, damage. Zarya bubble absorbs, and it's only like a second. You just wait a second, and then you drop the normal one. And that will just give the Zarya some charge. Uh, okay. What do I mean when we've barriered badly here? Like, because it's not too bad, but it's not perfect. So what you'll notice is we put our, our barrier and then people stop shooting us. That makes sense. What you're looking for is when people are, like, engaged on something. If they're just shooting at you as Zarya and you put the bubble on, you'll still generally get, like, 10 charge, maybe. You'll still take a shot or two. Um just out of habit like people are just slow on stopping firing it's difficult to do this ping you are firing projectiles all that good stuff so you will generally be able to sort of maintain charge but you'll very rarely get a huge amount you're more looking for moments where people are fighting something aggressively like they're committing to a fight like that like this tall who is insane or like this moment here okay back off don't commit too hard nice Nice. This is a bad path to go down. Right. <laughs> Let's talk about this fight from a fighty point of view. So we're playing this corner. When you're playing something like this corner, always expect that you're going to have to retreat at some point. Right. Always, always, always expect that, you know, this could go wrong very quickly. So I need to be prepared to leave. We can get this Ash. Take it chill. Take it steady. She's on like 70 hit points. We have 100 charge. A right click or two is fine. But once this Orisa starts making away in front of us, yeah, we back away. This is scary. Because Baptiste is new, people aren't very plugged in on how scary this thing is. Baptiste is incredibly good at killing tanks. It's insanely good. At killing tanks. She's doing, no, he gets a lot of uh, charge, which is fine. Like, they have no ground, you have ground. So when I see this, I'm like, I'm going through the hotel. Right? You don't want to walk back in a position where they can just shoot you through this for free. And that's the path we end up taking. If they land a few more shots here, you just die. And for the love of God, don't go back into it. Like, you see how fast Winston exploded? See how fast we're exploding? See how we're dying because we have no barrier? <laughs> you res like you've got to respect them at this moment. I like this bubble. This bubble is great. This bubble is Winston. Get the frig out of there. Give them the ground. Just give them the ground. They deserve it. The fact that we go back in here, this is death. Like even if the hook doesn't land, this is still death. Like we took one hit and we lost two hundred hit points, pretty much. You don't have personal barrier, you don't have anything safe, you used it to get out, you got out, and then we went back in for some reason. And as a result, they get massive advantages. Oh, oh. Okay. Only thing you can do here is put a barrier on him. Yeah, back away. Take it safety. Take it safe, 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 safe. Like, even here, I think we're, we might be too far forward. This is fine. We can play from here. I would say that's more of a move when you're trying to do maintaining, is, like, intentionally bubbling this. My advice here is actually pretty simple. What I want you to pay attention to is how spam happy the Orisa is as we go around the corner. So yeah, the soldier sort of debates us and that's frustrating. We come around the corner 
Nearest is like fine shooting away at us. And I just take note of that. And then I probably just bubble and walk around the corner with this detonating at the same time and then just walk back. I think the ash burn is not going to get us too much. 34, 37. Eh, it's not too bad. The most you can ever get out of one bubble is 40. But now we just don't have it. And like that's why I say it's maintaining because it's, it's slow. Okay, she was caught by that. Who are we contesting here? No one. We should also, like, and I'm sure there's going to be a note. Poor Moira. The thing is, I don't think you can save this Moira, right? There's, actually, you might be able to if she still... Ha if Fade doesn't go on cooldown there, you might be able to save her, in theory. But even when, like, a hook like this lands, it's like, oh, that's 40 charge straight away and it's just like keeping in mind your behaviors while doing it you, like sieging away and poking away using sort of right clicks doesn't really do much at 20 percent so your priority should still be barriers 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 how much ground are they taking am i safe here do i need to move back it's thinking very hard about position definitely don't go back in on it okay if you're gonna do this die on the point but i don't think that's very much value for you don't grab, for the love of God, don't grab. Okay. We did everything wrong there. <laughs> That's a very harsh way of putting it. But it's it's not surprising. Like, I see this happen all the time, right? This is so common, where people just do not respect this thing. Um, and they die to it. The, the thing that showed me how good it was, was Rascal playing Baptiste... Um, for San Francisco Shock, and the amount of times he would just use it, one tap someone with a headshot as Baptiste, and like kill Zarya's. It was just insane. And so I think you're fine going for like a dip in here and like going in, putting the projected barrier, but even then, I would be straight back out. You have a choice here of either you try and run and preserve the very little charge you have, but you're going to get a little bit from the, the top. And at this point, you kind of go, I have no idea what to do. Okay, let me tell you what to do. You either run, which might not work, or because you've committed to this, run and die on the point. Just die on the point because that means that they're not going to get point progression. Your team's going to be respawning and five people in your team are going to be back well before they can start making progress. By running away, and like by the sort of in-out, 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 we don't really know what I'm doing. I'd say at this point, you've already committed so much to like being in. You are so far in at this moment that you are not getting away. You just run at the point. And you just stand on it and you say, yeah, kill me. Because I'm going to come back with Graviton Surge and you can't do shit about it. By running away, they're still getting point progression. Someone is contesting it, apparently. There we go. The Winston was contesting it a little bit. And you got Bongo. But yeah, like in moments like this, the idea is you either die as fast as you can or you die on the point to stop them pushing and give time for your team to get respawns. Then they may raise at you. Yeah, you're, you were dead regardless of what happens. And like that was just a bad engage. Good. Nice. This is still winnable. 5 on 5. Reinhardt should be going forward. You should be going with him. Needed one or two bits out of order there. And it probably costs us quite a lot. I like that we're playing on the point though. Okay. What did we do wrong? It's pretty straightforward. So we know what we want to do, right? We have, we're going to contest this. It's certainly winnable for us. We got a bunch of alts. We got grav. They have no good way of answering the grav. And here's the thing: you don't need to go any further than this point. We we can just stay there because the payload gets contested at about here. As long as you are past that little barrier thing. You can actually contest this point. So we like run in, we take a bunch of damage on the way in. Okay, we don't have personal barrier to tank it, so we take a bunch of damage. And we get the grab out. Now that the grab is out, there's still a bunch of barriers to deal with, a bunch of problems to deal with. You got this nano boy here. My advice, throw your barrier onto the nano boy as fast as possible. You want to make sure that there is no crowd control, nothing that can interrupt him, no hog hook that's going to stun him for a second. You want that guy swinging as hard and fast as possible. 
And we do get it onto him eventually. It just takes a little while. Also, everyone's going to shoot at him. So you're going to get more damage off of it. And then you can just put right clicks into the back of it. I'm fine with the body block on Bob. And I say at this point, especially once we take the damage here, yeah, we just play behind the payload. Unfortunately, there just somehow wasn't enough damage despite the Moira ult, despite you right-clicking, despite the Reinhardt. Although, no, maybe, maybe. No, it looks like you've done it. Kill feed's a bit misleading as we're in third person. I appreciate that we're still watching. Rather than just seeing us come back from spawn. Team's doing okay, it's not going crazy. That's your Moira dead. That's a problem. You guys are in potentially a lot of trouble. That's a nice way out of trouble. Where did our barriers go? Okay, went until the Rhinos became out. The only thing, again, I'd say is like, respect the fact that your barriers are down and you are still in danger. Like, there is no need to, for us to go super hard when our barriers are on cooldown. This is still dangerous, as you can see. Like, we take quite a big chunk of damage. Still in building mode? Like, what I would do here is I would then step in front of the Reinhardt, put my bubble up, try and get as much charge as possible. They don't have a barrier at this point, I think. The Orisa's still coming back from spawn, although I think she's back now. So it's just a good chance to get a couple of big right clicks in. Respect it. Again, we're not respecting it. How do we respect this one? You move inwards to the right, use the payload as cover. So just make sure that, you know, this thing is not between you and the team. Make sure this thing is between you and cover. Do you try and stagger your barriers? Uh, like, ideally, yes, but if you have a good opportunity, like, it's fine getting both of them out. If you are going to get, like, 80 charge off of them, we're just not getting the value that we need to get. Like, I'm fine with that one, but... Like, once this barrier is out, it's again that realization of, oh shit, I have nothing now. I need to back up and play safe, because we can lose these fights. And if you die here, then we're in so much trouble. Luckily, the Baptiste is on no hit points, so we get the kill. But yeah, you can see, like, how dangerous that was. We almost died. We're still in the middle of the road. Yeah, biggest thing I'd say is just like be very aware of like your positioning at moments where you are vulnerable. This is fine. Go off. Okay, bubble. Okay, he's just, he's gone. Still got the bubble on him. Not sure why we're fighting that instead of the Baptiste. This is a moment where you could just gun down the Baptiste. Like he is completely on his own. Sit out. He's in the position that you often find yourself in, where it's just like I see this guy and I'm just like, yeah, he's dead. Why is Ryan flanking like that? Because he has a shadow. He's going for it. Your team has advantage at the moment. Oh no, he went through the... Why did he go through the pub? Guessing he's just horny for Moira. Just got onto her somehow. Comes out Earth shadow. And I like the adaptation here of like, oh, he's Earth Okay, he needs a bubble. Like, that's the correct decision in my mind. You are doing fine there because all the focus is on him. The issue is the follow-up here. Like, Genji's dashed, so Genji can't go anywhere. You can just turn and just hold left mouse button on this guy. Baptiste is pretty easy to kill. The only place he can go is up. Like, he can crouch and then jump into the air and you just go... And he dies. So this is like a moment of, oh, well, I can kill their Baptiste. And if their Baptiste dies, our Rhine dies, they still don't really have a push. Like, our Rhine will be back before it matters. Backing out is okay, too, but... No, oh, why are we going in? Like, we use our personal bubble here, and we use it, like, fine. And I'm okay with that use of it. Like, Moira gets hooked again, gets out, barely. We walk forward, we tank, and we are a big old tanky wall now in front of our team, right? Our team, if we think about the position from above, if we think about how this is laid out, or how it should be laid out, we've got, like, the alleyway here feeding into it. you got the... We're going to ignore the pub. Pretend the pub isn't there. You've got the bookshop here. Right, and you got the wall here, and it's like the alleyway here, all this stuff, right? This is King's Row. We are here as a big old barrier. 
our team should be now positioned behind us. Uh, there's nice little ducks in a row. And the enemy is positioned here. We're between us and the, and the enemy. We've got a big bubble. Everyone should be backing out. Like, you give up space at this moment because they, they are in a good position to fight you. You have no safeties left. We definitely don't go forward here. Once that bubble is gone, just back away. They've used the immortality field. That's great for you. Back away. Give up the space. Like, this is a little bit better now that we're using the wall in the corner. Their spawns are going to come back fast here. This is good. Okay. I think we're still playing a bit aggressive here, but Carlson should keep us alive in theory. Moira again, without fail. Uh, because of our team comp, I am actually okay with using the grav to deal with the Dragonblade. I think this one's a little bit rushed, but it's honestly okay. Like, you're, everyone on your team will die to this if you don't trap it. So, I think... Like, barely the Moira and Anna might have just been able to take care of it, but that's a safe thing to do. The thing here is to just, again, keep in mind that you, you've stopped their Dragon Blade, but you're still not stable. Like, this is still not a good feeling situation to me. We're still on the back foot. And I think we do the right, like, this is, to me, is the correct motion, right? You back off, and you use the payload, and you just stay and cover behind the payload, waiting for Reinhardt to rejoin you, because he should be back soon. He should be back any second now. The Moira goes nuts, and that's a good example of why you don't do this aggressive play. So, yeah, this is fine. Okay, bongo. I know, look, Ryan's back. Your team just, like, ended up getting super pulled apart. Like, no one knew whether to go in or out. When in doubt, pull out. I really think the Genji was the right thing to do. I think it's okay. It is the safe play. You can try and trust in, like, the ability of you and Moira to just left-click him to death, but... Especially because he doesn't have an Ana, but it's still risky. Okay, that's a good barrier. A personal barrier wasn't great. Okay, respect this. Respect it. Ooh, good. It's a bit of a spicy uh, ult there from your Ana. Should be fine. Just hold left mouse button. You're all good. Oh, look, we got another grab. Okay, let's talk about this, this moment here. When do we use our personal? When and why? Uh, yeah, we get halted. That's fine. I'm okay with that. Just a little bit paranoid about the halt. Barrier up. All good. Like, I would have barriered him a little bit earlier myself, but that's just me. And honestly, this works out fine. It's when we want to get in front of him. We kind of do, and then we kind of back out again. This nano is an interesting decision. Um, I don't like it myself i think that this is just asking for your ryan to get blown up by all their team shooting through what should be a well-placed baptiste ult but baptiste whiffs his immortality field they don't get enough damage through everything the ryan's still very low but once you see this many deaths you are fine you are just going to be a-ok -okay. Okay. I see what happened there. Don't ult, for the love of God. Sit left mouse button and right mouse button to finish. Aim could use a little bit of work, but... I can't help with aim. Like, no coach on the planet can just say, Yes, do this, and you'll aim better. Like, I kind of get what happened here. We're a little bit slow to react to the changing circumstances. Which is like, Oh my God! Reinhardt's going to get focused. We can maybe hold on to a personal here, but honestly... Yeah, like, you're getting shot at. Okay, use personal. Ryan gets one hell of an ult. That barrier is brilliant. And at this point, when you hear that maximum charge, when you are on max charge, when you are near 100%, just keep in mind that you have the biggest dick in the entire map. Like, Zarya just, like, flops on the table, and the table just cuts in two. It is terrifying to fight a full charge Zarya. So just hold that left mouse button on, people. Kill everyone. You are unstoppable at this point. 
don't get okay this this is a bit of the downside of this bit is when you shoot into spawn you don't do any damage so you gotta let them get to the corner at least this is where uh, yeah just back away back away back away you can use the reinhardt to sort of bait some damage this this is a big tell hopefully we spotted this this is important this farah wants to ult if you see a Farah hiding somewhere, she wants to ult, save your projected barrier for her. You only want to get Voss to demonetize. I mean, YouTube money is so little, I can do whatever the hell I please. Perfect. Yes. Beautiful. I love it. It's still okay. Don't panic. They used Bob, Blade, Moira ult. I don't know what happened. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of... Like, Farah killed about two people, Bob killed just about everyone, but honestly... Yeah, Bob Bob was just killing everyone behind you. And we get a bit panicky around this Genji. But you got so much out of them, you still have grab, you still have nano boost. You have enough time to respawn, come back. This is fine. This is 100% fine. Hog as well, hog as well. We should be okay. We should win this fight. You have Molten Core as well, which is insane with Grav. All we need to think about is get a good Grav here. Yep. And it's even better because Baptiste used the lamp, but we're not shooting the lamp. This could be cleaner. We're probably going to win, but this could be much cleaner. Let's, let's talk about lamps, guys. Should go without saying, you see this thing? You see this really shiny thing? We call this lamp. This is a lamp. Lamps are... They keep people alive. And if Baptiste throws out his before you use grav, oh, baby! You just kill the lamp and then you grav. The nice thing about lamp as well is, and I've noticed this 100% of the time as Anna, Everybody runs into it. Ah, oh, it feels so good. Everyone runs into the lamp. Oh, that's so nice. Look at everyone. Look at them all. Look at how many people are sitting in this thing. Why are we shooting anything but the lamp? Here. What? Why? Why? What? You can't. You, you don't kill anyone with the lamp up. Zarya can kill it pretty quickly. Um, it, it doesn't take much. Everyone should be shooting it. Because... If that lamp was dead, these characters, uh, well, especially, like, the Roadhog will probably be alive, but Arisa, Baptiste will both be dead by now, and you could be dealing with other shit. You could be focusing down the Roadhog already. They will be dead much sooner. We're on zero charge, that, that feels bad, man, but... Honestly, at this point, you have won pretty much the entire fight. You just need to make sure that they do not get you off this payload. Like, just stall get people alive at this point i can hear the genji fighting so i turn and probably check on the back line as well so yeah i would i wouldn't be backing away here i know i've been like preaching safety but honestly just run around the payload and be really obnoxious on the payload because if you can get respawns back you win so i would just be yeah i'd just be here and like going back and forth here if the roadhog wants to follow you around you just keep playing ring around the rosies with the roadhog that's all you're looking to do all you want Look at the lamp, look at the lamp. That should give us some value. There we go. So our barriers in general... We don't change our behavior when barriers up, but we should still win this fight. Yeah, okay, good. Let's talk about these barriers, because you can really feel it in this. Like, just like the, the lack of starting up. And like, how this happens? How does this come about? Why does this happen to us? So we get the grab in. And first of all, we should be looking, honestly, to just 
bubble something at this precise moment because we are on zero damage. When you're on zero damage, you do pretty much zero damage. You can finish off things that are low, but yeah. So yeah, we throw out that bubble. That one's fine. I'm actually A-OK -okay with that one. This one, though, I'm less keen on. It's just there's no good chance for us to, like, take damage here. The Rodok fires some shots at us, and then, like, we can still take a shot from him. You just let him fire his shots and reload. Like, you basically, you wait and see what he's going to do, and you try and line of sight him. Then you can bubble here when he's actually fighting and engaged. We missed the Reinhardt. I'm sure we are looking for it, but we get the Ana instead. Gets us a little bit. And at this point, we bubble and we run backwards. There we go. We're running forwards, but it's a little bit slow. We should be running in bubble, and then we'll be fine. This bubble's just unfortunate, I think. This next projected one. Yeah, you put it on the Reinhardt. He should be being shot by something at this point, but he's not. This one is just, again, nothing... Like, we are respecting this, which is nice. But no one's paying attention to us. On the bright side, we are playing very safe at this moment. Like, we're playing, well, fairly safe. A couple of the positioning things, like just moving around the payload, using the payload for cover would be nicer. Um, the running away from it. But we are playing very safe, and we are trusting our team to take care of everything, which is okay. So yeah, I think the, the three phases of Zarya would be very important um, to, to keep in mind and to learn and to internalize. The idea of, I can play in the style of step one, build charge, get to, you know, about 80 charge, then you can start playing very defensively with your bubbles and sort of just rotate through that. So, yeah. So are you shooting the turret? Well, it happens. It, it happens. Like, it's just a matter of keeping your cool. The more you play, the easier it will be to keep you cool in flight. You will know more about what's happening. Uh, okay, chat. What is this guy's SR? Tell me his SR and... I'll, I'll write down some that are offered from chat, but where do we think he is? I know where he is. And yeah. 2150? Mid plat? 240? Well, mid plat is what? 270? 2700? 2210? So, sort of a lot around this sort of area. 2336? Two five five zero. Okay, so a lot around sort of you know mid gold. I'd say leet. Wow, wow, harsh, very harsh. I'm gonna put it on there anyway. Two six eight two. Okay, according to the email, uh, he was placed at two point two, two thousand two hundred. That's probably about where what I would say as well. The reason why again is like there's just a lot of the expectation of like. So remember what I said about like people in Platinum? They execute combos, but they don't quite get them working. We got a couple off with like the Grav and Torbolt, but there was like some really bad Genji ults um, coming out. There was just like a lot of fights where people just seem to throw ults at the wall and see what sticks. A lot of just really iffy positioning, like people standing out in the middle of nowhere. That's a very, very sort of gold thing to do. Um, generally, just like a lot of cooldowns just being used as they come up and just willy-nilly as well. Not huge amounts of thought being put into like what we're doing and why we're doing it people are just kind of doing things and seeing what happens um which you know that's how you learn that's how you experiment but it's generally a sign that they don't quite have a full hold on like the exact meta so yeah i would say probably mid gold is where i would have put it as well um, but i saw it as well so that might be tainting my thinking um in general i'd say like the biggest thing to work on is just it's sort of tailoring our play to the situation at hand. As Ana, we like we had a lot of moments where we were like just jumping forward or pushing very far forward, positioning ourselves generally okay. Um, it's a bit of a scrappy map, but in general, like when we weren't just stood in the middle of choke points, which a lot of people do, make sure you're like positioned by walls and stuff. We were generally playing in positions like this one where we can kind of see what's going on with the team and what's happening. Our uh, instincts on like okay, I have alt. This fight's kind of shaky. I can alt this guy. Those instincts actually seem okay. Um, you generally have like good ideas behind what you want to do with those alts as well so you're, you're at least planning what you want with your alts and that's a very good sign because that means you're thinking about well what's coming up what are they going to do how they're going to react hopefully um, shoot lamp for the love of god shoot the lamp please shoot the lamp when you're playing Zarya off tanks especially you should be shooting it roadhog and delete it in like a single right click um, 
shooting lamps is very good, but Zarya is just our barrier control. Like, when you get the barrier control right, it's our barrier control and how unsafe we're playing at times. That's where our positioning starts to really fall away. With Like, standing in the middle of choke points without personal barriers, you're a chunky lass with 400 hit points, you're going to die pretty quick to a lot of different things. Respect that that can happen. Respect that those hooks can come through. We died to a hook early on in this match, which I think we could have just completely avoided. I think it was on first point. It's kind of a good example of that. And, like, corners are your best friend. Your absolute best friend. Also, respect the Baptiste ult. I know it's it's weird and kind of new. Yeah, it's this moment. But respect the Baptiste ult. Now, this is kind of an unsafe path, but we get away, we use our personal, and then we go back in with no barrier. Winston drops his bubble, it dies instantly. And then we go back in. And, I, like, I don't like this. This is This is death. I feel like if I don't play the enemy to take initiative, it's realizing that there are moments, especially as Zarya, you want the enemy to take initiative almost. You want them to like try and do something because then you can bubble it and save people and then you suddenly can hit them back that much harder. It's like a judo swing kind of mentality, right? You want them to hit you so you can hit them back even harder. It's, it's sort of understanding that there's an ebb and a flow to Zarya where you have moments of very low power. Even if you are on high charge, you will still be a little bit weaker because you don't have your cooldowns. When you have your cooldowns, then you can start doing things, then you can enable things to happen, then you're very powerful. Nothing and it's it's realizing those different moments. Then one and one amongst the many. Hey! Thanks for the coaching. I've missed the content. Look forward to the eventual drawing stream. It'll be fun. I want ideas for what we should draw as well. I'm thinking a stupid Overwatch comet. Maybe about like the lack of Zen lore and Lucio lore or some shit. We'll we'll figure something out when we get there. It'll be quite fun to do. Um but yeah, I'm probably going to wrap it up there, to be honest, because I am very hungry. Uh, I haven't eaten today, and I woke up hungry, which is a fun thing. Uh, and I've been talking for the last five or so hours, so I'm going to wrap it up there. I get scared, and I th can't think straight when, like, chaos is happening. Yeah, um, that's the practice thing. Like, as you play more, you will see the same situations happen again. And it's I know that it's not the most useful advice in the world of just play more. But it's also like just play and get used to like what will happen in certain situations. I noticed this when playing with people who weren't very experienced and it's like, you know, a Doomfist gets into the back line and they freak out because it's like, oh, what do I do? Am I doing something wrong? And what, how do I react to this? And whereas if I get killed by a Doomfist and you'll see this on the stream, I just kind of go, eh. because that's, you know, if the Doomfist hits me with a slam and I get knocked up into the air, I, I just shoot at him and that's all I can do. And I know that's all I can do. I know that there's not really much more I can do except for maybe change my positioning, maybe hang around the McCree more or whatever. There's options, but in that precise moment, I'm just kind of like, oh, this is happening. I know this. I can react to this properly. Uh, are you leaving with Ryan on Gamescom Friday already? Nope. Uh, I will not be at Gamescom. Like, if I go to Gamescom, I would need someone to pay for me to be there. I am very strapped for cash right now because Twitch has been bad on paying out, but that should be fixed soon. Would you tolerate more of my potato vods? Try and find a way to record better. If you can't, then probably best not. It's just, it's very difficult when everything's that blurry. Unless it's like a really good game. If it's a really good game and you send it in, sure, I might take a look at it. But in general, it was this good. This was fine. This is absolutely fine quality. We could do a lot with it. Alas, I will not be at Gamescom. Uh, and if you're Missile Mage, just, you know, make sure you check your VOD. Just click through it all the way. No, it happens. It happens. Draw my vacation, Torbjorn. That would actually be a lot of fun. Torb would be an interesting one to draw. He'd throw all of my goddamn um, scale off. Also, should I say more? Uh, sure. There's no harm in it. Like, at worst case, I don't use it. But hopefully, I do use it. It depends on how many VODs I get. I'm getting quite a few now, which is nice. So thank you for sending those in. We still have like a May one that I might tackle tomorrow because I'm curious to see it. Uh, there's also apparently a GM Zenyata, which I'm kind of curious about. Uh, so I kind of want to look at that. So we'll probably do more coaching tomorrow as well because I enjoy it. And you guys seem to as well, which is always good for me. All right, guys, thank you for watching to the end. I've been Joshua One Voice Amongst Many. Thank you. Uh, and thank you, Gohan, for putting it in the chat. If you want to send footage in, the instructions are in the description. If you want to send in your placements or you want to send in a way of hiding your SR, you can do that and we can do, I guess, my SR with it. Uh, if not, then I will just coach it as per normal. 
I have to go to one. It's very unlikely I'll be at many conventions. Maybe CoxCon, because CoxCon is in the north. It's in Telford, which is pretty near me. It's like an hour away. So maybe CoxCon will go. Uh, otherwise, yeah, thank you for watching. Thank you for joining me. Thank you those of you who supported the stream. Missile May, Seward, Al Clive, Warren, P. Lily, and Lawton. Thank you so much, guys. And I'll see you tomorrow. Bright and early, maybe, with some end. Yes, we'll see. Bye! CoxCon in Britain? Yep. It's Jesse Cox's convention. There's going to be a bunch of people there that I really like as well. Ryan could apparently get me in, generally, I think. I think Ryan can get me in, so we'll see. All right, guys. I'll find someone to host, because I've got a bunch of people as well. It's always nice. Thanks for hanging out.